So many of us are so ready for Intel to enter the GPU market, hopefully shake things up, drive in some more competition, better prices. We've already been seeing graphics card prices improving, probably heavily related to, you know, Ethereum mining profitabil profitability dropping, as well as getting close to hopefully that final proof of stake transition, which has been delayed in the past and hopefully won't be delayed this time. But as I'm saying, we're all very ready for Intel to enter the market, whether we're gonna buy one ourselves or not. Now, interestingly today, we see from BenchLeaks on Twitter, this tweet, which is linking to Geekbench results for an Intel graphics chip being, uh, being um, benchmarked on Geekbench. So if we take a look at this, we do see the OpenCL score. We'll dive into a little bit of that in a second. But else, what else do we see here? Because there's gonna be various Intel uh, Arc Alchemist graphics chips. So what one is this? Well, first we have a bit of the system information that it was being tested on. It does look like a i5-9600K based system. Uh, so not the latest and greatest of processors by any means, although not terrible or anything like that. It looked like they had 32 gigabytes of memory running in dual channel mode here. But here's where it's a little more interesting. We see that this is the Intel graphics chip and it is the 512 compute unit model, which according to every leak that we've seen, seems to indicate this is the top end chip. And we see the max maximum frequency reported as 2400 megahertz. Now, in some of the previous uh, leaks that we've seen, I believe my memory is that we were only seeing it around 2.1 gigahertz rather than 2.4, which is what we're seeing here. And so as it looks like maybe as the engineering samples get closer to launch, we're actually hitting these higher frequencies, which is good to see. And there had been rumors out and about that the final chips would be around this 2.4 uh, gigahertz speed. Now, one thing that's a little interesting here is I'm seeing the device memory listed as 12.7 gigabytes, which is certainly a strange number. Now, in some of the other leaked Intel Arc Alchemist benchmarks, I feel like I've also seen some strange numbers, so I kind of wonder if somehow the integrated graphics memory of, of this system is somehow combining into that. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll just throw that out there as that's a weird number. Now, what actual performance do we get? Well, there's this overall score, but then they also break the scores down into these individual subcategories. I don't even know what all of these mean. But the important thing is, this is not a straight up gaming benchmark. This is not running the, <laughs> the graphics card in an actual game. So first let's jump over to the overall score, which is just a number. What does it actually mean? Well, I saw a video cards article reporting on this and they nicely, ah, let me fly out of the way. You know what, actually let's just like shrink. I'm melting, I'm tiny, I'm tiny. Is this small enough guys? Ah, you know, okay, like, peek up at you from the bottom. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> this is disappointingly horrible if you just look at the number. This is between a 2070 and 2060 Super, basically a tie. Those numbers are all about the same. It's trailing the 3060 and the graphics cards climb from here. And they're mostly comparing it, it looks like, to NVIDIA GPUs, although they do throw the 6700 XT from AMD into this comparison as well. Now, this is disappointing, but it's also not a gaming benchmark. You'll also notice that the AMD 6700 XT is actually not really where it should be in terms of gaming performance. It would normally be beating a 3060 Ti and almost matching a 3070 in terms of gaming performance. So I would say, don't panic. Also, we had somebody replying to video cards with this nice uh, chart where they took the other numbers that we had here. These are these uh, OpenCL performance uh, marks broken down by category. And they went ahead and made this chart. So I'll go ahead and uh, take a look at that. So if you look at this compared with the RTX 3070 and the AMD 6700 XT, which makes sense as comparison points given the rumors that we are expecting something like 3070 level of performance, 
Of course, we don't know if those rumors are actually true, <laughs> thus the interest in these benchmarks. But that's why they're throwing it up against this class of card. And we can see that in certain results, right, blue team, right, this is pretty obviously color-coded, right? AMD, NVIDIA, Intel, we got our, our RGBs going on here. Um, anyway, so it looks like in whatever Sobel is, Sobel, Sobel, uh, they, they got crushed. And also looks like Canny wasn't great either. But if we actually look at other categories, so if you look at this more category by category rather than overall score, it looks like uh, blue team's actually hanging right in here in between the 6700 XT and the 3070 in a lot of these. Doesn't do well in histograms, does better in stereo matching, actually looks like it has the win in Gaussian bar, uh, you know, hanging in there in depth of field, face detection, right? Loses badly in horizon detect, uh, loses badly in feature matching, but it's right up there in particle physics, uh, SFFT, and th that's why the overall score is maybe disappointingly low, but we have a lot of individual categories where it's doing just fine. Now, I don't know enough about any of these to tell you if any of these line up better to certain gaming things or if it's just completely unrelated. Um, so let's just emphasize what we actually learned here versus what we didn't learn here, right? Now, my overall thoughts on the, um, the Intel chip here is I really wouldn't be surprised if it does actually compete uh, around 3070 levels. But the biggest question marks I have are drivers. There's a lot of info out there about question marks on, on the drivers, and it's true that Intel, um, you know, it, it takes a long time. Games were not designed with Intel in mind. The, Intel hasn't worked with all of these games as they were developed, like getting drivers ready over a long period of time. Uh, obviously, they've had their integrated graphics, but like, you know, I, I don't think the level of, it, of attention here uh, you know, they, they don't have that, that long body of work to build off of. So that's a big question mark. And um, I think the, uh, the dark horse here is also the XCSS feature, the uh, DLSS equivalent, but more open platform. It should run on NVIDIA and AMD cards with a fallback feature. It'll run faster on Intel. And that's the big question mark too, because if that ends up actually getting fairly widespread support, I would expect it to only be in a handful of games at launch. We've seen, um, I think we've seen it demonstrated in like the, what is it called, the Rift Breaker. We've seen it dem demonstrated in Hitman 3. Um, I believe uh, Raja Kaduri, uh, that's his name, right, t uh, tweeted out a picture of him uh, with, I think it was Shadow of the Tomb Raider running in the background using XCSS. So, you know, it, it's gonna be in some games, but I, you, you know, anyway. <laughs> but overall, competition here can only be a good thing. I'm excited to see it. What do you guys think? And have an excellent day. Oh, and it got delayed. I already reported another video, but it seems like it got delayed to qu quarter two is when we're expecting the desktop chips. It's gonna be the mobile chips coming in quarter one. Figure I'd throw that in here at the end. <laughs> now have an excellent day.